excited that um, Coach Zach came out. And he just simply was so open. Um, Coach, what can I do? Let me know. And I appreciated that. I watched a game of you, Coach. I went to the game where um, I'm like the adopted daughter of assistant coach with Daytona State. Okay. I stayed after and watched the men. Um, and I just love your style. I love what you do. And, you know, the best people that you learn about are the ones that – show and embody Christ and, and just a good person when they don't even know you're looking. So I thank you for being on the call. Um, by trade, sure. we it with prayer, if you're good with that. Sure. And just give us a small moment of devotion, and then we're going to let you take it away. All right, for sure. God, I just appreciate that uh, you can bring us all together here today uh, and talk about servant leadership, talk about impacting young women and young men uh, through coaching, through the vocation that I certainly feel called to do. Uh, I, I know we're in a, a tough time right now, so certainly, hopefully, uh, a couple folks here today can hear something meaningful that they can take back. And uh, as we continue to fight uh, the battle that we're that we're fighting today, and uh, just help us remain focused uh, on your will, and help us you know, really remember that uh, we are here to serve others. And at the end of the day, uh, we all have a purpose in life. And, and if we can make one person's better, one person's day better every day, uh, let that be your will, God. Amen. So, Chelsea, first off, I just want to say we, we dealt with the little Zoom bomb before. Uh, and, you know, it, that's one thing I kind of wanted to talk about. Like, you hear the saying all the time, no good deed goes unpunished. And I think sometimes we have to fight to overcome that because at yeah. times it can feel that way, right? It, you can feel like I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm fighting an uphill battle. Uh, and that being said, you know, we have to remain steadfast in our commitment to always doing the right thing. Certainly, any time in life as coaches, we're going to come up against things. And obviously we're all very competitive people. Uh, you know, we're going to come up against young men or young women that may bite us a little bit on, on the path we're trying to get them on. Uh, we may, you know, come up with a, a battle in, in any part of our life, but certainly in coaching, I, I think we have daily battles and trying to get guys to understand that we want the best for them. Uh, we're really trying hard to get guys and, and young women to understand that big picture, the decisions we make every single day impact the rest of our lives. And so for me, you know, at the junior college level, uh, I really try to impact our guys uh, and just get them with the very first team meeting we have. We talk about Jesus Christ and certainly the fact that he was the ultimate servant, right? He was the guy that gave his life for us uh, in, in return for our, you know, our eternal salvation. So we're in a situation where we have to understand that, you know what? For somebody to lay down their life and be on the cross, for us to to have that always kind of you know that's next to us every day, right? We, we never have to we never have to be in a situation where we feel alone or abandoned because Jesus Christ died for our sins. And for me, uh, the the no good deed goes unpunished thing is just something that I constantly constantly fight because you you try to do everything you possibly can to put you know our our players, our student athletes in positions to succeed. Sometimes they're all in about embracing it. Other times uh, it can be a little bit more of a battle. But I don't think as coaches we can ever settle for just fighting the fights that we can win. I think we have to fight the fights, not just that we can win, but we have to fight the fights that need fighting. And sometimes that may mean being entrenched in a battle uh, with with a, a person you're coaching, with, with an adversary. Um, you know, we obviously we're in recruiting season right now. Uh, for college basketball and you know, there's a lot of uh, of uncertainty surrounding the virus in every sport I know but uh, you know we've run up against uh, you know at times uh, you know other programs not necessarily saying the greatest things and I think in coaching I always have to understand like you know if people have the need to, to be negative uh, you know we have to really stay steadfast in our commitment and know that we're doing the right things and I think that the one thing that helps me, you know, put my head down at night on the pillow is knowing that how much our guys feel and realize that we are fighting for them and that we have their back. Um, you know, we have a big locker room sign uh, in our locker room that says honesty is the best policy because the truth always comes out in the end. And at the end of the day, we tell guys like, look, we only have two rules in our program. Don't lie and don't be a victim. Because the, the reality is, for so many young people, I think it, you know, we can be in a situation where we tend to get off track and we feel sorry for ourselves. And the reality is, 
there's no substitute for a can-do work ethic and a can-do attitude because, again, God is always on our team, right? We're never alone. We're never fighting by ourselves. So we really don't have any excuse if we get knocked down to not get back up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that, uh, you know, I just, I, I try to make every aspect of our program about our players. You know, we, we call our program a player's program because at the end of the day, we, you know, I say that all the time, but like we want guys when they walk out of our gym, when they walk off our campus to know that we have their best interests at heart. And also, you know, we're, we're always going to tell them the truth and be honest with them. So that I, you know, when you walk into our locker room, like I said, honesty is the best policy because the truth always comes out in the end. And I tell guys, like, look, as long as you're in a position where people feel like you care about them, people feel like you are going to tell them the truth, you know, they'll do anything for you. Um, you know, we one, one of my favorite stories from from the gospel, uh, John chapter 13, when when Jesus is is washing, uh, washing the feet uh, of you know, of, of folks he's around, right? So I'm just going to read it, verses 12 through 17. When he had finished washing their feet, he had put his clothes on and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set an example for you that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know those things, you will be blessed if you do them. So, Right there, right, Jesus Christ, you know, somebody that, uh, you know, he's, he is the ultimate, really the ultimate, for me, the ultimate motivator, but also the ultimate example of somebody that's about servant leadership, somebody that's showing, hey, I am your Lord, I am your God, but I'm washing your feet, right? So I'm, I'm setting the example for you of, you know, there's, there's really no substitute to not, to not you know, try to serve others and do and put others first. Um, I'll tell you this: as a young coach, one of my other my other uh, favorite Bible verses is from Philippians. As a young coach, and this is something I really I really fight and and battle with. And and I'll be like my my probably my biggest shortcoming as a young coach certainly being a guy that's that's very ambitious and and motivated and wants to wants to beat everybody and wants to be super competitive and wants to have success. So Philippians chapter two, verse three says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. And I'll, I mean, I, that's one that I struggle with, you know, every single day, because I think when you're a competitive person, you are really, really driven to, to best your peers, right? To be better than the people you're playing. And I think sometimes we can get so caught up in the scoreboard and obviously they keep score, right? We want to win. We're coaches. We're all, you know, we're all competitive people. But, you know, when I see our guys, uh, you know, graduating and, and signing, you know, to four-year schools, and we're, you know, obviously we're very excited for them. That's really what it's about. You know, signing day is what it's about. Graduation day is what it's about. You know, is anybody going to remember 10 years from now what happened in the Region 8 championship game? Well, they might remember the result, right? But really – you know, it's about the journey. It's about the bonds that we made with each other. I mean, last night at midnight, uh, our, our group message, our group text is, uh, is texting, uh, old photos of each other, uh, from high school and guys are, are making, you know, making fun and jabbing each other. And it, you know, it's just those, the relationships are really what matters. So in the verse that I just read, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Philippians chapter two, verse three, that is for me, the one I struggle with more than any, because uh, I am I am a very competitive, aggressive, straight ahead kind of a person and kind of a coach. And Chelsea, you you mentioned you you watched uh, one of our games after uh, after Daytona State women played at our place, and I mean that sometimes scares me to death because I probably look like the devil more than I look like you know like Jesus Christ on the sidelines. So we are uh, you know we're constantly fighting, trying to. Uh, you know, to do the right thing and, and fight for our guys. But coaching is, it's such a passionate, uh, it's a passionate vocation, but I call it a vocation, not just a profession, not just uh, a job or a career, but it's a vocation. Cause I certainly feel called. I've been in other industries. I feel called to coach. And uh, do I make as much money now than I did in another industry I worked in? No. Uh, do I feel more fulfilled and happier and more motivated when I get up every day to, to come to my office? Absolutely. 
and that for me is uh, is really what it's about. So, uh, you know, I just as a as a guy that's trying to really impress upon our young people, look, the only person that dictates what happens to you is you, and if you can really be others centric, others focused, and and really think about how the actions, you know, how your actions first impact yourself, but but those around you think like when you walk out on the floor, you're not just representing you. Think of all the other people you're representing. You're representing your parents and your family. You're representing our school and our team and our administration. So everything you do, right, is is on, you know, it's on a scale where there's some magnitude because people are watching. And certainly as a coach, I feel like we have such an ability to impact people because of the platform that we have. Um, so for me, you know, I just, I try to constantly remain really locked in on the fact that, you know, our Lord and Savior died for us on the cross. He was the ultimate servant. That was the ultimate sacrifice, right? The ultimate way of showing us, hey, you're never going to be alone. I'm always here for you. And you never have to feel like you're fighting something by yourself. Uh, and I think for, for young people today that, you know, it's like, Social media, right? Social media is a, a topic that <clears throat> I don't know if we talk enough about because so many young people derive their sense of self-worth, derive their sense of who they are based on how many likes they get on an Instagram photo or on a tweet. Or And it's like, I mean, I've, I've seen guys, a coach that only got 100 likes in the first 30 minutes. I had to take it down. You know, like what? Um, I mean, who cares, right? But I think that is unfortunately part of our culture. And that's one that we have to combat because, again, it's okay. I just tell guys all the time, like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to lose. It's just not okay not to, you know, to not try. You know, I think sometimes we, we as, as people that, you know, we struggle because we, we are with social media, we are thinking about how are we perceived and how are we, how are we viewed on a, on a, a bigger, larger scale by our, peel, by our peers you know, eventually when you get older, I mean, I'll be 30 in October, you know, so I'm still certainly, you know, a young coach figuring things out. But I'll say, you know, the the longer I do this, the more I realize no one really is thinking about anybody but their own team and themselves, right? So we're all, sometimes we get caught up in thinking about, oh, well, what does he or she think of me? Well, really, they're thinking about what what do you think of them? You know, sometimes we get so caught up in this, you know, this this situation where we're, we're thinking about others when really we, we forget well, what, what really matters here? What really matters for me as a, as a young coach who's I'm still single, not married, no kids, you know, my family uh, every single day on a day-to-day -day basis is, is our young men in our program. So I try to treat them as if, you know, they're, they're the people that have to feel love, feel, you know, and, and at times tough love, but feel like we always have their back no matter, you know, what happens. Um, you know, again, we just, we really try to pledge, tell them the truth, and I tell them, look, it's going to be uncomfortable at times to play, you know, in our program because we are going to always tell you the truth. And sometimes that may not necessarily be the most comfortable thing for me to say or for you to hear. But big picture, you know, we're about creating in our program young men who are going to be good husbands and good fathers and, you know, successful, successful adults in the workplace. Because uh, basketball certainly is going to end for all of us at some point. And for me, being a 5'11 guy that, you know, when I jump, you probably can barely slide a credit card under there. Um, you know, basketball ended for me a lot sooner than I wanted to. But, uh, but I think coaching, you know, coaching has, has given me, you know, a platform to be able to impact people's lives. And hopefully uh, through all, you know, through all my faults. And, and certainly I'm, you know, not very, very, very far from perfect and, and have shortcomings. But. I try to be somebody that, that remembers, uh, you know, that we are, you know, the son, the son of God did not come for Boy. us to win championships. Boy. He didn't come to, uh, to everybody help us win everybody games or to now, help but, us but, get a better job but, or make but, more money or drive a nicer, God, you know, drive a nicer car. A he game. came and he, you know, he, one, showed us how to live, two, showed us how to treat others, three, made the ultimate Boy, sacrifice, paid Boy, the ultimate price for our sins. Because one, we could have free will. Two, we could forever be in a situation where we don't have to think or worry about well, what's going to happen. You know, if I'm in a situation where I'm uncomfortable or I'm unsure of what to do, and I think that's 
you know, that's what really, I mean, that's what we talk. What is faith? Faith is believing when you can't see it, right? Faith is believing when you may not necessarily be able to, to touch something or feel something. So for me, again, it's, it's a consistent effort to understand and remind guys Jesus Christ was the ultimate servant. We are never alone. We are never fighting a battle by ourselves. Faith carries us through times of uncertainty like we're in right now. You know, I mean, everybody, oh, are we going to have a season? Are we going to be able to bring guys in in the summer? Well, you know, that might be our, our immediate focus as coaches, but the reality is, you know, it's so much bigger than that because, you know, as much as I, I we pray as a team before every game, we pray after games. But in our pregame prayer, I never ask God, you know, I'd really like to shoot 80% of the foul line in this game. and I'd really like to hold them under 40% from the field. Like, we, we don't ask for those things. Just keep us safe. Help us remember that we are trying to really be young men that are focused on others. Be others-centric. Um, you know, and I think the last, the last uh, Bible verse I, that I really try to, you know, drive home for our guys is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And that is, you know, for us, just a, a constant reminder to get our guys to understand you're never alone and you're always in a situation where, you know, there's there's going to be someone that is fighting for your salvation. And Jesus Christ is that someone. So I don't want to talk too much. Chelsea, you tell me, like, do you want to open it up? Questions? Um, I'm good. I, I just... You know, certainly I could talk all day about, about basketball and faith and as it relates to, uh, to, to our deal here in Tallahassee, but certainly would love to, if there's anybody out there that wants to talk or ask a question, I mean, uh, I don't really, I, I don't want to talk about, about me. I want to hear about what everybody else is, is working with. Absolutely. So we, and that's what we'll do now. We'll open the floor for anybody that has um, any discussion points or want to comment or have a question for coach. Hey, Coach, this is Coach Douglas, and I am um, a high school basketball coach up in Georgia, uh -huh. Chelsea's former basketball coach. And one thing I wanted to um, touch on, I guess you kind of affirmed for me that um, when you talked about Philippians 413, that is my motto for my team. I've been having that particular scripture for years and years and years throughout all my coaching. And just to hear you um, talk about you using that in your program that kind of affirms to me that I'm on the right track. And I appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. No, I, you know, we can do anything through him, right? That's where the strength comes from. You know, I, there are so many times in life where we can sit back and feel sorry for ourselves. And that's what we tell our young guys, you know, again, two rules in our program, don't lie and don't be a victim. Cause at the end of the day, no one feels sorry for us. The world is a place that is not going to slow down. It's not going to, you know, pick us up. We have to pick ourselves up. And because of our relationship with God, that, you know, because of the strength that we have, because of our faith, that's what get, should help us get back up because we're all going to fail. Life is about dealing with failure. You know, that's, we tell our guy, look, you know, we, we're going to lose games. We're going to have things come against us. But at the end of the day, are we going to be people that in this game and then, you know, more importantly, later on in life, are we going to be people that point the finger? Are we going to be people that go, oh, you know what, we just can't overcome it. Maybe it's a little bit too tough. Or are we going to be, you know, someone that says, hey, you know, it happened. So whatever happened, happened. There's nothing we can do about it right now except try to jump back up. Uh, and be, again, because we have, for me, without faith, I don't know how people get through, get through life, get through the day. Because really, you know, the life is short. Life goes really fast. You know, time flies. I mean, I, we're, we're all sending old pictures in our group chat last night of each other. And I, you know, I sent a picture from high school and my hair was dark, you know, and now I look at, you know, I'm like, well, uh, you know, time flies. And that coach in junior college maybe has, has contributed a little bit to, to the silvering of my hair. But, you know, like this life is short. But really, what are we after? We're after eternal life. Right. So that's that's the one for me that I am. Uh, and really just trying to get our guys to understand, that, you know, what there's the son of man did not come just to show, you know, to show us how to act for no reason. Right. He came to serve. He came to lead. 
and he came to give his life basically as a ransom for our salvation. And I think we have to remember that. Anyone else? Coach, thank you, by the way, for saying that. Uh, thank you. Hey, Coach, this is Coach Kern. Um, thank you so much for the word this morning. Uh, it was really needed. Um, I know, I don't know if I'm speaking on behalf of the coaches, but Monday seems to be the Zoom day where there's a million things to log into and, right. and, and clinics and you got to flip from a computer to a phone. And, um, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. Uh, last week has been an anointing on my life above and beyond. Um, and it had to do with coaches just simply being transparent about their love of, of God. And so that was really, really important. Uh, the truth always comes out in the end. Boom. I mean, that it doesn't get any realer than that. You know, it really, really doesn't. We are affecting young people every day they, when they leave our gymnasium or, you know, they leave our site. Uh, that, that what they don't do in the later parts of things are not going to matriculate over to the court and somehow to the classroom and somehow to light and morals and uh, we were 18 at one point. It didn't make any sense, and I get that. Um, but to consistently bring that back twofold, and I'm going to tell you, man, that don't lie and don't be a victim, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. We we are in a business, like you said, and I've said this every single day, it's a, it's a vain business, wins and losses. You People get hired and fired on it, but you get friends and you get enemies all at the same time. You know, And there's, there's no other business like that, um, which is absolutely – crazy but I, I just think those were two amazing tippets um they're so simple they're so basic um but that drive so deep and so i, I really appreciate uh the word um helps tremendously for me and then thirdly that competitiveness um don't google me because there's some pictures you <laughs> you know um but but in the in the process that's a part of the journey too that's a part of the journey. I mean, you know, I'm trying to play defense with you up and down the sideline, and eventually this NCL, ACL, someone's going to say, don't do it. You know, so, um, but but we are. Our, we're mirror images of what we're supposed to be. And I think, you know, you talk about being a young coach, but I, I'm going to say this I'm a little season, just a little bit. Um, I just want to say over time, you manifest into something different, and only – Games and time is going to do that. So keep that fight. Stay, stay fiery. Stay feisty um, as long as you can um, because it seems like you really have a good balance and a balance between walking it and talking it and then showing your guys, like, listen, I'm still in the fight with you, man. So um, kudos to you. Thank you. I really do appreciate this. And Chelsea, I've said it every single day, and I'll say it again. Uh, this has been a huge blessing for me and my family. So I appreciate you greatly uh, for putting this together. Awesome. Coach Kern, thank you so much for the kind words. And I'm so, so sorry. He did just say this, and I don't know if we mentioned in the beginning, and that's why I was late. Um, when we do go through our prayer requests at the end, here at Tennessee State, we obviously just lost a staff member, um, which was near and dear to our hearts. So I am asking when we talk about life being extremely short-lived, we continually, continuously are talking about COVID-19, uh, but we lost a 36-year-old quarterback coach uh, overnight. And so I'm asking that the family here on this call, when we do a prayer at the end, please cover their family and cover the institution. For sure. For sure. Thank you, Coach Kern. Uh, certainly, yeah, we, we will pray for Coach Coach Jackson. And uh, I just am appreciative of, of – uh, you know, the, the understanding of the, and, and I, you know, I, I've certainly, I see you have a great presence on Twitter coach. Uh, so I'm, uh, I certainly am a follower and, and, uh, you know, I think we're all fighting the balance and to toe the line of, you know, very energetic and fiery and, and passionate. And, you know, sometimes we can get a little caught up right at the moment. I certainly, I know I do. Uh, you know, I probably had a technical or two this year, too many. Um, but I, I think we, as coaches, you know, try to instill in our young people that, uh, you know, you, you do have to be a fighter. I mean, in this in this life, you've got to be a fighter. Nothing is nothing is easy. Nothing is handed to you. Um, you know, and, and that's certainly it's certainly true for for uh, for all of us. That, but but certainly for for young people that they have to go through struggle because we, you know, we we don't really grow without failure in my opinion you know there's no growth we tell our guys there's no growth without suffering and you know their suffering can be uncomfortable but it's certainly a necessary suffering to get to 
uh, ultimately where we're where we're trying to go. Anyone else? Coach, see why you're trying to unmute down there? <laughs> just trying to make sure, just trying to make sure you know I got you. If so, Coach, congratulations on a great year, man. Right, Thank great, you, Coach. great season. Did a heck of a job. Thank you, uh, and appreciate the word today. Sorry, sorry, you guys. I was late. I got some stuff, work stuff, but I was trying to get it done. Anybody else? Hey, Coach. Uh, first off, appreciate the message. And uh, second, uh, something you mentioned that's uh, – near and dear to my heart and something I actually spoke on when I talked last Thursday uh, was just the uh, the social media thing and how you know like how it can be used as a tool obviously but I mean kids identity is so wrapped up in social media today and I agree I feel like that's a message that's not really talked on enough so um, I think it, you know I, we deal with it in our program and especially coaching young women I mean that's huge like just the social media presence and how like literally they feel like their identity is is wrapped up in you know how many likes they get or whatever so i think it's important to all of us as coaches to continue to preach that message and you know um just self-worth has been something that's kind of been on my heart lately and i think for kids today that's probably more important than ever so i appreciate you you know bringing that up and i feel like that's important for all of us to continue to you know preach that message so we're on the same page man thank you thank you for saying that now social media is is it's so powerful because it can be a, a great, uh, as a program, it can be a, br a great brand ambassador. But for us as individuals, it can be, uh, especially for, for young people that just aren't quite through the growing process and still figuring out who it is they want to be and how they, uh, you know, how they want to ultimately choose to live. And that is, uh, I mean, I, I fight it. I, I tell our, our young guys, like, look, man, it's, it's not okay to see yourself in a vacuum of just the social media world because that like that's not real the social media world is not a it's not real it's it's you know I, we've we have consistently fought and we even talk about it in recruiting i mean i'll be a little vulnerable right now we talk about it in recruiting oftentimes the more social media followers someone may have often may end up kind of inversely relating to how someone's able to deal with conflict and deal with adversity because the the problem with being or at least feeling like you've got a lot of quote unquote followers i think sometimes we can want to stay in that that world uh where okay if i get a couple thousand likes or a couple hundred likes or whatever the number is that's a really cool thing for a young person but then they come into the gym and they're like, oh, Coach Zach is yelling at me. He doesn't care that I just got 1,500 likes on a photo. No, I really don't, you know, because that's not, you know, at the end of the day, like, I'm trying to get everyone to understand that life is not, it's not easy. So the only thing that really for me personally has gotten me, you know, gotten me through hard losses and really intense competitive recruiting battles that we haven't, that we haven't won or, um, you know, or, or going after something and, and not getting, it. you know, that's for me, I just try to like faith, faith and a, and a steadfast commitment to, it's not just about me. I'm a part of something that's bigger than me, both as a Christian and as, you know, as a Tallahassee Eagle for us, those are, those are our groups of people and your relationship with God and your relationship with Jesus Christ people that are never going to abandon you, right? So that's, I just try to really try to get our, our young guys to understand that social media is a really powerful tool and it's fantastic. It allows you to keep in touch with people and, you know, see other people's lives as they're unfolding, but it can be a source of tremendous insecurity and uh, just, I, I want them to try to stay away from that insecurity because, because uh, it really, what is it back? 
Hey, Coach, how you doing? Uh, up, Coach? Coach Locker over here at um, Florida State. Um, I just wanted to say, um, Coach Mitchell, um, I like that Philippians 413 as well. And I know many of you read like I do and just sit here just thinking about that, that particular verse. Um, you know, at the time, Paul was a prisoner. He was writing to other Christians and just telling them the secret of, of that passage about uh, being content in every situation. Um, you know, uh, that's good or bad. Just saying that in God, I can trust God and all. And I just want to say thank you for sharing that, um, that powerful verse. Awesome. Now it's... Uh... We can do all things for sure through God and through His strength. If we remember that, it'll be it'll be really hard to to ever be worried too much about things. Hey, Coach. Coach. This is go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. This is Kendra Aaron. Um, I'm women's basketball assistant coach at Central Arizona College, and I'm also a life coach. And one of the things that you guys touched on, obviously, the social media and kind of the false sense of self, but even us as adults who don't depend on social media, um, we struggle with that, other people's opinions of us. And that is something you touched on, too, is other people's opinions of us actually has nothing to do with us, whether it's good or bad. But yet when it's good, we, we try to take credit for it. And when it's bad, we also use it against us, but we start going against us as well. But no matter if it's good or bad, we have to remember that ultimately it has nothing to do with us. It has to do with everything that they're going through, everything that the way that they're perceiving life, the way that they perceive whatever message you just put out to them, whatever it is. And it really has nothing to do with us. Um, and that's one of the hardest things for us to really understand because we so badly want that attention. We've been raised in a culture that we want that attention. We want a good job. We want, like, even in kindergarten, we want that gold star. We want that. And that's how we've been kind of brought up. And one of the things that, like, even if you've ever had a class where they give you no feedback, like my entire life coaching training, we had no feedback as far as like we would submit something and they'd be like, the only way you get any feedback is if you did something wrong. <laughs> and that was one of the hardest things to deal with. And but it's made me understand that, like, when you put things out there, when you put things out there, if you don't get a feedback, that's OK. That's OK. That doesn't mean people aren't like holding on to what you're saying. That doesn't mean, I bet you every day, Coach Kern, we tell her, and I'm sure she has her likes and whatever. We tell her about her social media presence and how great it is. But every day she doesn't have to depend on that or she doesn't, or she knows that no matter what, good or bad, people are absolutely watching. And that's something that we have to understand. And not that we're sitting there being scared on how we put ourselves out there, because no matter what the other thing is, is like we could be the juiciest peach in the world, the best peach ever, and somebody out there is not going to like peaches. And that's fine. It's perfectly fine. But we get so caught up in that other people's opinions of us. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is you were talking about being comfortable and your players being comfortable or not being comfortable. But one of the other things that as a life coach that I really teach is that one thing is you're going to be comfortable at some point. I, or you're going to be uncomfortable at some point, whether you're uncomfortable now because you're having to work a little bit harder or you're uncomfortable later because you're wishing you did that now. So that uncomfortable is where the growth is. Now it's just a matter of, are you going to do it in a regretting way of, I, I wish I would have been uncomfortable at that time. And now I'm uncomfortable because I now I have to work a little bit harder or not do things that I could have done if I would have done that before. Does that make sense? For sure. And so that's absolutely where I, I think growth is, is in that uncomfortability. So thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome, Kendra. No, I'm, I'm with you 100%. That's why I said we tell our guys there's no, no growth without suffering and there's no growth in a comfort zone. And I think that's one thing, as, especially as, as coaches and, and as adults, the, the higher we rise in a profession, the higher we rise in our career, the more we, you know, when we, we get married and we have, you know, we have children. I mean, all these things go into, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to fail. You're going to be in situations where, you know, you're like, man, maybe I should have handled that a little bit differently, you know? And, and that is something that we, we have to, to grow from. And, and I'm with you hundred percent. I mean, I, I've, I think 
we can all probably admit we've all spent too much time thinking about how other people see us and how other people view us. And that is such a gigantic waste of time and energy. And really, you know, if you think about all the time that we spend, you know, just focusing on things that don't matter, you know, I, I, again, we tell our guys control what you can control, control the controllables. Those are things that while it's a cliche and it's something you'll see on, you know, a motivational tweet or whatever, it's true. It's really true. There's no, for me, there's no substitute for being able to stay focused. Uh, we, we have a, a little, the gif with the dog, right? Sitting in the middle of a fire and there's fire burning everywhere. And the dog said, this is fine, right? We have that, like, that's a big thing in our program, right? Be comfortable in the fire because that's what life is. There will be times, you know, in life where there, there is a fire surrounding you and your options are panic or deal with it. And, you know, we certainly don't want to spend too much time in the fire, but there inevitably are going to come times where you are challenged and you're uncomfortable and you have to deal with a situation that, um, that you, you have to overcome. And the only person that's going to be able to, to help you is you. And hopefully, you know, your faith and belief in God and your relationship with God, that faith for us, for me at least, you know, can help us when things are uncertain. So, yeah. Kendra, thank you. And that's interesting that you say that because when you go, when you get comfortable in the fire, then it doesn't become like a fire anymore. It doesn't seem like a fire anymore. For sure. No, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, you know, I, I thought I, I, I dyed my hair one time when it first started to really go silver. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just, maybe I should just deal, you know? So here we are. Uh, at, at, uh, at 29 and a half with a head full of, of silver hair. So that, again, let's just maybe be comfortable. And that's kind of a joke, right? We, because that, that's something that doesn't matter at all, but it's certainly probably something I've thought about more than I, I should have, because really who cares? Uh, but that, I just think, again, the more we can get, first of all, ourselves really, you know, we have to start with us to understand, Hey, the only thing that really matters is, are we, are we happy? Are we doing things that that positively impact others. That's what this is about. Like, that's why we coach. Yes, it's great to win and, and, and have the notoriety that comes with that and, and trophies and all these things. Those are great. But really, those things are all fleeting. You know, everybody, co anybody that's been in coaching long enough knows that at some point it's going to go bad. It's going to go backwards. You're going to lose a game you're not supposed to or uh, your season's not going to go. Somebody's going to get hurt. You're going to win way fewer games than you thought you were going to coming into the year. I mean, that's, that's coaching, that's life. But, uh, but I think the more we can, can realize that uh, as long as we're focused on really the things that, that impact eternal life and the relationships we have, I tell our guys, the only things we have are relationships. So they have to be meaningful, treat them with care. And that's awesome. Um, I'm glad you're talking about um, how people <laughs> Uh, if you look at Jesus' life, um, Jesus was focused actually on the people. He was focused on his mission. If Jesus would have actually actually thought about what people were thinking about him, he probably wouldn't complete his mission um, on life. His, his, his mission for, for us was to die on a cross so he might die for our sins. Um, one scripture I stand on, I always tell my players, James 4 and 10 says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. So it's not necessarily looking at people, but if we look at God and just humble ourselves before God, he will take us further than any man or woman on this earth. So that's one scripture I do stand on, um, that I do share with my players, and I do appreciate that. Um, talk about the social media, because that's another conversation that I got to have with our entire um, sports program when we go back to school, because social. I'm at a middle school athletic director, so it's, I'm hearing stories about players, social media stuff, and just got to handle it. It's, it. It can get you in trouble uh, if you're not careful. So I appreciate that. For sure. No, thanks, Coach. That is that is a great a great scripture. And I think if you, again, if we stay others-focused, if we say, you know, God-focused, if we're humble, hum, humility really solves a lot of our issues. I mean, they say pride comes before the fall. That's really true. You know, we as coaches, we, we can, for me personally, uh, pride is one that I that I fight, and I because we tell our guys like, hey, everything we do, we should have pride in, and I mean that. I think you know, in the context of that, it, it it's true. We want we want to be proud of the work that we're doing. We want to be proud of how 
you know, how we're, how we're playing, how we're, how hard we're working, all those things. But sometimes that pride can turn into a little bit of an ego. And, you know, that's one that we just kind of have to be careful because it's so easy to get caught up in, especially if you have success, it's easy to get caught up in, you know, the reason I'm having success is because of me, you know, and that, that's just not in any situation, you know, coaching, not coaching, like no one is successful because of, because of, their work and their work only. Uh, it just that's not real. That, that doesn't happen. So um, I think sometimes it, it can go to our head a little bit. But the more humility we can practice, and we this, the more humble we can stay, I think that makes that makes it a lot easier, honestly, to deal with adversity. Zach, I love it, man. Um, Glad I got to jump on this. I come a little bit late, but congrats on an unbelievable season, man. I don't, I don't think people realize how hard it is to do what you did down there um, you, this season. Uh, and I know we talk a little often, too. But, you know, a couple of things I wanted to touch on, man, is one thing that, you know, people always tell me is is, is a quote that I, you know, really come up on and, and live by is that no one ever gets anywhere by themselves. You know, you, didn't, you, you don't get anywhere alone. Um, so, you know, we kind of preach that. Um, with our team, I love the, you know, don't lie, don't be a victim thing. You know, we're big on that. Um, you know, without growth, there's no suffering. That's a home run. You know, one thing we really hit on is, um, competition breeds excellence, uh, kind of helps us, um, in recruiting, you know, when kids get a little turned off or something, when, you know, you're signing multiple transfers or multiple, you know, really good kids. You know, you kind of hit them with that. And then also it kind of, you know, helps your practice a little bit as well. Um, because then it gets guys wanting to compete and wanting to. And, and you know, that's what you got to have, especially at that level. Um, but I love, you know, you know, the things you talked about, you know, live by faith. You know, I'm, I'm huge on that. You know my story. Um, starting from, you know, at the, at the very lowest level of the, of the coaching deal. And, you know, hopefully by faith, this is still only the beginning. Um but, you know, one thing I, I'm big on with, with my players is I preach, you know, living with a purpose. Uh, I always ask them about their alarm clock because, you know, it, it really bothers me when kids are just getting up whenever they want to. Like if it's a weekend, you just get up whenever you want to. You know, you do this or this thing, you just play the game. You know, I really feel like, you know, the people that are going to be successful, the people that are going to accomplish all the dreams that are inside their head are going to be the ones that – you know, wake up every single day with a purpose. You know, they've got things that they need to knock out, things that they need to do, um, you know. And so I really put, preach the, the alarm clock with my kids. Um, and then, of course, you know, like my back home, my phone lock screen is Philippians 413, actually. So, you know, I think that's a huge one for coaches, especially young coaches like ourselves. Um you know, I've got two years of, of junior college head coaching experience and I'm about to be 28 in June. So, you know, still a long ways to go, still a lot to learn. Um, but, you know, I, I, I did love how you hit on, you know, how you maybe made more money in other places, but it really wasn't where your heart was at or it, was, it wasn't what your calling was. Um, and so, you know, I relate that calling with passion. You know, if, you, if it's really your calling, you're going to have a, a ton of passion for it and a ton of energy for it. And, you know, that's what I think, you know, was for me, you know, I got into the, the scouting service deal and, you know, there's good money to be made and, you know, that, that, that level. And so, but, you know, it was just never the same as, as the passion you feel with, with, with helping mold young players, you know, whether it be men or women, um, you know, impacting a kid's life, you know, for the next 20 years, setting their life on a new, uh, rock, you know, I grew up kind of a little differently than most people uh, that looked like me grew up. So I got to see a different um, side of things and got to see like a different way to really relate to kids and, you know, how they some of them just the experiences they have are, are completely different than what we go. through. Um, so it just helps, man. It's very rewarding to, you know, like you said, the praying before practice, the praying after the games, um, you know. I, I'm a big component and, you know, I can't make it like mandatory, mandatory. I tell them like, if you really don't want to go, let, you know, shoot me a text. Let's talk about it. But I do a thing where once a month we attend a different church in our community and it's never the same church because I want them to just experience different things. 
Um, so that way, you know, those other Sundays, if they like one of the ones we went to, well, now they can just pick up and go there. They're set up. They're comfortable with it. They've met the, you know, right people involved. So, I mean, those are, you know, little things that we do. But, you know, with all the, um, you know, coaching stuff that's going on, I'm really glad that we actually had to get to hop on this one um, because I am a huge faith-based guy. And I definitely love some of the things you shared as well, as well as some of the other coaches. Um, so appreciate you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Glenn. First off, when you guys come down here to play us, you know, maybe don't just don't bring your alarm clock at all. You know, uh, but no, <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate you saying all that, man. I mean, I certainly congrats on, on the new gig. You've done a great job uh, for two years, which is why you got, got the gig you got now, which is awesome. Uh, and man, I'm, I, I'm with you, you know, in, in terms of just getting, you know, getting guys to understand uh, competition. And it is, you know, anytime you're bringing in uh, transfers like we've done, it, it is hard and you got to get guys to really buy in and believe. But I, I think it, as long as we can all stay focused on, and, and that's why I started with, and not forget, Jesus Christ was the ultimate servant. There's no way we are ever going to be on our own if we are not you know, if, if we're walking by faith, we're never we're never on our own. And I think there's a tremendous sense of of security and and men, you're at mental you have some mental peace when uh, you understand that you know eternal salvation awaits you as long as uh, as long as you don't lose 20 games. No, I'm just kidding. As long as you don't you know really get so lost in what you know what really matters. And that's uh, I think for me. You know, again, trying to stay away from uh, from being, you know, so focused on what's next, and and really just focusing on the relationships that we have with our guys, and you know, really trying to stay humble. You know, like coach, like coach mentioned before, you know, trying to really grasp that uh, no one is doing anything on their own, uh, and, and that is uh, that's one that sometimes when when you have the more success you have, the bigger your ego gets. You can forget. You know how you got there, um, you, because you get you know caught up in, in your own success a little bit. But uh, no, I think for you know Jesus Christ did not, you know, for him to not have given his life in vain. We have to understand that 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 is our opportunity, our opportunity because he died for our sins. Our opportunity is to use his example of servant leadership, of you know being someone that was willing to wash feet of those that uh, were just everyday common people you know that's kind of how i try to get it you know always get it back so that's why we say the big thing in our locker room when you walk in it says honesty is the best policy because the truth always comes out in the end and that's true it really really does so uh don't spend any time we tell our guys that's why we say don't lie right because it's not necessarily the the deed that gets you messed up it's the cover-up that gets you messed up so um you know don't don't be somebody that's uh, you know if you screw up we all screw up we've all screwed up we've all been 18 19 20 so, you know, just say, hey, I'm, it is what it is. Let's, let's commit to trying to fix it. So, Chelsea, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Anybody else? All right. Y'all yeah, sure? <laughs> no, Coach, I appreciate you, and I'll just tell you my thought um, before you close this out. Um, everybody touched on a lot of what I was already having in my notes and just thinking and you know you it confirms a lot because not having heard you know the various speakers uh three of which are actually on the line right now you continue to weave um this huge blanket of just affirmation and that's how i know that you allow god to use you as his vessel i mean like you know coach uh, harrison that's on the line talked about how you talk about social media he did that as well, along with Coach Simmons, who couldn't be on the call today. And just how it's, you know, we have to speak life and breathe life into our pray, into our players. And one of the things that you said, and you talked about how um, Jesus Christ was the ultimate servant, which we should, we should model after. And you said that honesty is the best policy because the truth always comes out in the end, which it does, you know, and we can put on, as people say, as a kid say, you know, put on and finesse as much as we would like to but at the end of the day god knows the heart and he judges the heart and i love how you reaffirmed that and close that by saying that at the end of the day 
you know, we are after the eternal life. We're not after followers. We're not after what people think and believe. We are after the eternal life. And so that just weaves into what every coach has said. And so I thank you so much for just offering your story and being open and sharing with us and answering questions because hearing coaches say, you know what? You know, I'm glad I'm on the right path because that's what I do. I'm glad that you said that because that's my struggle. And that really has helped us, especially in such a time as this. So I thank you so much just for being willing and for what you do and trust. No, I didn't think anything different. I'm animated as well. <laughs> so, I like, so I didn't think anything different. I think we all are to a degree, um, especially because we have that passion, exactly what you talked about. And that's what I saw in you. And those are the things that led me to be so excited about you being on this call. So thank you so much again. And I'll allow you to say anything final you want to say. And if you could close us out with the prayer as well, I'd appreciate that. For sure. Okay. Chelsea, thanks so much for having me. Uh, and this has obviously been a, just a great experience to, to meet other like-minded people. And, and uh, you know, this is, we all are a very, we're all very uniquely positioned to impact people as coaches. I think sometimes we can forget that every single thing we do every day, what we say, how we act, everyone is watching, you know, especially when you're in a position of leadership, everyone is watching all the time. And that is a blessing because you have a, a very far reach to impact in a positive way, but it can also be a curse if you are not understanding of the power that you have to impact. Uh, so I, you know, this is for us uh, as, a, as a program and, and certainly as coaches, as a fraternity, I think the more we can stay focused on others, the more we can get our young people, our young men and women to understand that walking by faith is a much easier path than walking alone. And, uh, you know, like Chelsea, you just said, you know, eternal salvation is, is what we're after. And so we, you know, no matter how, how many times it may feel like no good deed, uh, you know, goes unpunished. Sometimes that may feel that way, but we have to, I think, keep your, you know, keep, just keep your nose to the grindstone and keep going because there are going to be so many times where we feel defeated, but that is not, that is not why we coach. You know, we coach because we're able to keep going and to, to push the people around us to get back up and to also keep going. So with that, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for listening and letting me share. Uh, a little bit of my story and, and certainly how we how we do things in Tallahassee. Uh, and, and we'll end with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to you know, speak with uh, other like-minded, uh, Christ-centered people. This is, uh, for me, uh, a very, uh, just a blessing because for, for so many of us, I think when when we are coaching, it is it is a battle to understand that the bigger picture is much more important than the next 15 minutes and whatever adversity we may, we may be facing at the time. Please keep the Tennessee State University family and Coach Jackson and his family in your prayers and in your thoughts. And, uh, and certainly for us, just keep, you know, keep us safe. Watch over us as we uh, as we try to continue to fight the good fight to remind the young people that we impact every day that you are and your will is ultimately uh, what matters and what's important. Help us to remain humble. Uh, let your will be done and watch over us as we continue uh, to try to make an impact every single day. Amen. Chelsea, thank you so much. No, we thank right. you so much. And uh, sure. before you get off, Coach Zach, there's a message from Coach Glover, Matt Glover, in there. So I want you to take that information down before I close out. And for okay. else, I just want to thank you guys for being a part. Um, after the poll that we took yesterday with other coaches, I'm hearing that we would like some more of these. Um, so I have about three pending coaches um, who have agreed to um, join us in this. And so I will let you all know the date and the time. It won't be as frequent as every day, um, but we will continue this. Um, and I'm so glad that everyone is getting, you know, something out of it because I know that I am. So, Coach, thank you so much. Um, guys, keep your ears and eyes open as I will alert you uh, for our next ones. And just stay safe and keep each other um, in, in your prayers. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank, and, um, thank you so much, Chelsea. I'll see you guys soon. All right. Thanks for being here, guys.